Hello, my name is Cindy. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we are going to talk about education. This is the third video that I am making for This Way Network and I made a video all about me, who I am, and why I'm here talking about education and a little bit about my background. And the second video was all about homeschooling. Homeschooling is a great choice and I'm so glad that I was able to homeschool my kids for several years. <laughs> so this video today is going to be about what is a Christian school. So thank you for joining me and let's get into it. What is a Christian school? Hmm. Well, you may have heard of Christian schools. I have taught in three different Christian schools now, and I am teaching so that my kids can go there to school. And you know, Christian school, school, any type of education is all about the kids, right? This is what a Christian school might look like, sort of like a traditional education. Some of the specifics that a Christian school might have in it. First of all, they believe in the freedom to teach the Bible. Christian school obviously has at its forefront just teaching principles from the Bible, which we also call the Word of God. We have a structured curriculum where we call it a traditional curriculum where we're going to teach the main courses, English, math, science, and we're going to teach them from a Christian perspective. Also, the Christian school is an extension of the family and church. So the Christian school will support the family and whatever the parents want for their children, that's what we're doing. We want to support you and the family and encourage the church and the teaching at the church. Some of the verses that I found that kind of go along with the purpose of a Christian school would be 1 Corinthians 10 31, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Proverbs 3 5 and 6, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Philippians 4 13, I can do all things through Christ, which, which strengtheneth me. You might see that I have the these and thous in there. I do really appreciate the King James Version, and there are lots of reasons for that. But I think you can understand what these verses are saying. And I like to just explain that the Christian school is not just about teaching a Christian curriculum, but it's about sharing a lifestyle. And as Christians, we do want kids to internalize their walk with the Lord. And I found with my kids, you know, I try to teach them what's right and wrong, but we also need to point them to the Lord and allow the Lord to work in their life so that they can have a desire to walk with the Lord, not just teach them what to do, but teach them what God wants for them and to have a relationship with the Lord. And all of these things help with that. So a Christian school is a ministry. Why should I send my kids to a Christian school? Well, in our area, the Christian schools keep their cost at a lower price. So it's not the same as, say, a private school. It is a lower price school so that it can be affordable to parents. And the teachers agree to accept a lower pay than maybe teachers in their general vicinity at the public um, sector. And they agree to it because it's a ministry to them. And they're sort of living by faith that God will provide the things that they need over and above what they make in their salary. The school is usually partially supported by the church, not all the time, but usually the church will support the school in some way, maybe with facilities or, you know, 
different ways that they can help the school so that it can keep the cost down. The purpose of the Christian school is to train children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And in the curriculum, we have books and lessons that are based on biblical principles and with a Christian worldview. Now, when I was in high school, they didn't have a lot of Christian curriculum, so we would use whatever was available and then bring Christian perspective into it. But these days, there are a lot of companies that are making curriculum with a Christian worldview, which is really nice. And so that's what we use at our school. The Christian school is a commitment. Parents and schools will partner together to bring the best education possible to the students. The goal is to show God's love and to strive for excellence all while preparing for the best future possible. Education is important, but always keeping in mind, excuse me, education is important, but always keeping in mind the will of the Lord. Christian schools follow the class structure of a traditional school and usually offer Bible classes and chapel services and prayer. And we teach with humility under God's direction. We understand that we are not perfect. We as teachers and administrators, we also need to rely on the Lord for our own direction and to help students in their in their walk with the Lord. So we kind of all work together to try to do what God would have us to do. Is it expensive? As we said before, the cost is kept down due to the desire to make it affordable, but it is a financial sacrifice for many parents. I know when I was a kid, my parents sent me to a boarding school, which I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. And for them, it was, you know, we had to keep our car, even though it had, you know, it was old and everything like that. You know, we made sacrifices in order to be able to have the education, but it also wasn't an exorbitant amount that we couldn't, you know, even handle the price. Okay. So as we have said previously, the Christian school has a traditional approach and it's very structured. The Christian school model is traditional. It has structure. Discipline is very important and strong guidance for the students. It's not all about just, you know, what do you want to do today? It's <laughs> this is the plan for the day and we follow it. The outcome is desired that students will be prepared to enter the workplace with similar class base as laid out by the public school and secular model. Students will be equipped to enter college or any life path of their choice. Now, it may be a concern for some as to how students from a Christian school will do on standardized tests. And it has been proven down through the years that the structure and the teaching from a Christian school, when applied to ACT, SAT, and uh, tests like that that the students do quite well and it hasn't been a problem that they have a different curriculum the curriculum is still geared toward giving the kids the knowledge that they need in order to excel okay so the next slide says traditional skills are taught most students from Christian schools excel beyond the average student achievement in a public school. And we also have a desire to teach character. Students are taught good character, such as being kind, working hard, respect for others, and good general manners. I really appreciate the fact that we don't allow any kind of, you know, inappropriate words being spoken. We do address different behavior issues and we do have a standard in the handbook that we would want people to abide by and they are required to agree to that before they would go into the Christian school. 
All in all, the Christian school is definitely worth the sacrifice and effort. The biblical values that are taught in the classroom will be something that these students will remember the rest of their lives. And of course, we want to teach Bible values. We also want to teach with love and hopefully all those things together will help the students. All those things together will help the students in their complete education. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And now that I've gone through those slides, I would like to go back to just talk to you a little bit about the Christian school that I went to when I was in high school. And this is the kind of thing that I'm drawing from, and this is called Dublin Christian Academy. This at the, right now, it is a K through 12 Christian day and boarding school. When I went to school there, it was only uh, seventh grade and up. And we ha actually lived in the dorm if we were mostly just ninth through 12th graders. And we did have some uh, town students, people that would come back and forth. This school was is still in existence and they now have uh, all the grades of course and they have on their website at dublinchristian.org why dublin christian they train young people in biblical standards morals and ethics to live life and they train them to be leaders we need them to be biblically based following the teachings of the lord jesus christ and also to be an example for others doing good in the community for the betterment of the whole world. Now, the Christian school that I went to was actually donated by a uh, millionaire, I think he was, <laughs> in New Hampshire. And his name was, well, he, he was called the man from Steam Steamtown because he collected steam engines like like real steam engines and he had this property in new hampshire and it was a farm property and he gave it to two men who were brothers and they moved up to new hampshire from florida and so the story is that when they moved to florida they or they came from florida they drove all the way up and uh their names were melvin and leon moody and they have quite the story. They drove up and they were like, it, they came into a farm with woods, pigs, cows, horses, chickens, and they were like, this isn't gonna work. And then they said, this has to work. <laughs> we gave everything we had, this is it, we're doing it. So the first year they actually had a working farm. And as time went along, they implemented a really awesome Christian school. And for me, it was great because we would just, I lived about an hour away, so my parents would drive me up on a Sunday afternoon, and then they would come get me on a Friday, and I would spend the weekend at home. We had sports activities during the week. One of the greatest parts of the whole Dublin experience was choir, so we we i think they we had about 35 students were in the choir and we would practice every day first thing in the morning so we would get up we had chores to do we had breakfast and i believe we had to be at the main building somewhere around eight i think it was before eight like 10 till eight or something and then we practiced until our first class and I am not really a morning person, but I really loved choir. And we would practice. We did programs throughout the year, but the biggest program that we really loved was the spring program where we would work out a 45-minute program with choir songs, speeches, uh, sometimes like poems, Bible verses, things like that. And our leader put them all together, or director, put them all together and we went around and we visited churches on the weekend and we would sing at churches and then we would stay overnight at people's homes. And then 
we had a two week spring break. For one of those weeks, we traveled around. One year when I was in choir, we went up north as far as Canada. And one year we went out west. The next year we went south. And then the next year we actually stayed around in the New England area and we would travel to churches every night and the churches would feed us supper and then we would sing and do a program and then we would go to the people's homes uh, overnight and then we would meet up with the group again and we would travel. So we had this big coach bus and it was actually not top of the line, but it was awesome. <laughs> we had the greatest experience. And the thing about a Christian school that I loved was that um, I really did believe in God and I loved being taught by people that could tell us what the Bible says. And I love being taught by people who actually lived the truth of the Bible. They just were wonderful Christian people and their example stayed with me my whole entire life. I also really appreciated being able to meet people <laughs> my own age that also were Christians and many of those friends that I met, you know, we kept those friendships throughout our life. I tell people that we were kind of like brothers and sisters because we lived there. We all had jobs. We all had things we did. Um, like one of my jobs my first year was to wash all the silverware. So like at supper, we had a dining room and we would feed all the students and we used regular plates and silverware. And what we had to do is we would um, stack all the plates. I had a friend that she did the dishes. I did all the silverware and we would kind of rinse it off and then you'd put it into the little basket things. And then it went through the dishwasher for sterilizing it. So, um, and during that time, we had the dishwasher, the silverware person, we had the pots and pans person, we had the food girls, the, usually there were two food girls that had to put away all the condiments and all the extra food that was left over. And then we had uh, the guys that put the dishes in the dishwasher. And so we all had jobs. And during that time, we would actually sing songs. And we would always just love that, you know. Um, I, the girl that did dishes next to me, she sang really good alto. And I didn't really know how to sing alto right away in ninth grade. So I would sing the melody, she would sing the alto. And some of the boys they would sing parts and we would have four part harmony while we're doing the dishes and cleaning up after supper so it was awesome i just loved it and those are some of my most amazing memories that i still have today um later on one of my jobs was to vacuum the living room so in our dorms we had our dorm rooms and then we had like a main living room that we we would all you know, congregate, just like a regular living room that you would have in your house. And so they would assign jobs for that too. So my friend and I were the ones that would vacuum, you know, after everybody goes to bed, we went downstairs, vacuum and clean the main room. So those are some of my most awesome experiences. I just really love it. And I just think that a Christian school, when you do what's right, it just is so great for kids to remember. And, you know, just there's just so many opportunities for kids. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is most Christian schools in our area are pretty small. So one of the advantages that we have in the smaller schools that, is that it is a smaller ratio teacher to student. And so we're able to be able to discuss things with the teacher, ask questions, and it's a good environment to be able to learn. And we also did a lot of studying together. Like one of my friends in high school, she was a year older than me. She actually taught me how to study. She taught me how to memorize and how to get A's. 
because, you know, I really wanted to learn, but it just wasn't happening for me. And so she sat down and she was able to like call out questions and just give me some pointers on how to actually learn the material. We would help each other with, you know, quizzing each other for tests, quizzes, whatever. We would do speeches to each other. We would memorize poems together. Um, it was just a great experience. So I believe that Christian school is a really great option in our country. And I'm so thankful for the people that have sacrificed their time, their effort, their lives for the cause of having a Christian school. And I really think that it's a great option. If you have any Christian schools in your area and you are interested in one, you know, check it out. In our, I am teaching at a school now where there's no uh, overnight school at this school. I have three kids that are still in school. And so I teach and they go to school. And it's been really great because in 2020, I was teaching and I, I was sent home in March and I just was really discouraged with everything. My kids uh, didn't really like staying home to do the virtual school that year. But the following year, I went ahead and said, you know, we're going to stay home. We're going to do homeschool. Hopefully we can do some fun things. I don't want to go to school and then have to go home because people have to quarantine, you know, in and out, in and out kind of thing. So 2020 to 2021, we homeschooled. And then during the summer of 2021, I really wanted to teach somewhere, but I wasn't sure where I was going to go, what would be a good fit. Well, I found out about this new school that was going, it was in its third year, not far from me, and I had never heard of it. And it was just getting started and they needed a math teacher. So lo and behold, I went down and I think it was July in that summer that I went down and I talked to the administrator and just kind of like, shared all my story like you know if you don't like me don't hire me <laughs> this is who I am and she listened to everything I said and she still wanted me and I'm going into my second year there now and it's been great because this school started two years well let's see what year they started uh, they were in their third year so they started the year 2019 and then 2020 they had the shutdown so they've had a lot of obstacles that they've had to go through but they're doing great and their enrollment is increasing almost daily still <laughs> we already started school we had one week of school already and it's going very well my kids like it and they are enjoying the friends that they have there and so it's been great. So there are some great places out there. Now, looking at my life now that I've been through a lot of experiences, I think that education is very important for parents and teachers to figure out what your philosophy is, what you want for your kids, and try to figure out what it is you want them to get before they turn 18 right so of course you want them to learn the basics but you know one of the things that i've learned that we need to be more involved in is history teach good history um, and good geography so that they know where places are and also how to get involved in your community in 2020 to 2021, I really learned a lot about how our community works. And in New Hampshire, we have each town has their own board. We have a board of selectmen. We have a board, a school board. We have planning board, zoning board. Uh, we have library trustees. And I found that in our town, there are very few people stepping up to take the positions on these boards. And we are all so busy and we just think that these things run themselves, I guess, you know? We pay our taxes and we figure, hey, 
you know, they've got this. So this year I started going to lots of different meetings and finding out how our town works and who is helping do what. And I realized that they do need help. And so I think it would be good if we would incorporate into education how to be a part of your community and teach kids that this is part of your responsibility as a citizen of this town, state, country, you know, that we would be involved and that we would have a place in our own community you know we can watch the national news and we can you know think this or that about whatever situation is happening but it really comes right down to what's happening daily in your town you know what's happening in your your schools your community and that's where you can make the biggest difference so even if you send your kids to a christian school you are still able to be a part of your community. And like I am right now, I am part of my community. I'm going to a lot of meetings and I'm meeting a lot of amazing people. Um, That's what happens when you go out and you start going to meetings is you will meet people that have the same heart as you and you will make more friends and you will be able to work together for these things. I've been going to flag waves and some people are like, think that's silly, you know, go and wave a flag. Well, the thing is, it's not just about that. It's about who are you meeting up with? You can encourage one another. Who's driving by? They need to see that there are people that care about them. There are people who care about this town and this community. And what better way than to just be out there on the corner and waving hello (laughs) so this year i am actually um, on the school board of my school in my town i've also been going to lots of the town meetings and i've also volunteered to be a ballot clerk for the upcoming primary elections and all of those things can help our community and can give us hope for the future so when we think about education it's not all about just fun and games is it we're preparing these kids for the future for their future and it's very important and these are some of my thoughts on it i'm so thankful that in our country we have lots of choices we can homeschool we can do christian school we can do private school virtual school um so many options and i will be sharing more of these options in this series about Let's Talk Education. If you have any comments on this video, please post below. Please uh, look out for another video about education. And thank you so much to This Way Network for allowing me to put this series on their channel. And I also want to tell you that they have a newsletter called this, you can go to thiswaynetwork.com and I have an article in the last newsletter and I hope to continue that series as time goes along. So thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Have a great day.